Hello, I'm Rob from The Malt Miller and today we're looking at testing using hydrometers and refractometers. Now if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and of course you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. So if you're new to brewing, we're going to discuss the best way to use each different piece of equipment, but we're also going to go a little bit further, look at some of the digital options that are available and also when and where to use a refractometer. So before we get into exactly how to carry out a measurement, let's look at exactly why we want to do it. We are measuring the amount of sugar in our pre-fermented beer or wort before fermentation takes place. We're then gonna take a measurement after fermentation, and then we can do a calculation between the two measurements to give us the amount of alcohol in the beer. So just to go a little bit further, sometimes it's necessary to take gravity readings during fermentation. Different recipes may call for dry hops to be added at a certain point during fermentation some lagers need to be brewed so that before fermentation finishes there's a temperature rise. There are many reasons why you would need to take a gravity reading to measure your actual specific gravity at any one point during a brew. So we all know that there are visual signs of fermentation taking place. A beer will develop Krausen on top, there'll be CO2 produced which possibly makes airlock activity. However, if you've got a hydrometer or a way of measuring the specific gravity of your work, you know what's going on. It should be a measured process and not a visual process. Broadly speaking, there's three different ways to take specific gravity of your fermenting beer. So we have the traditional method, which is a glass hydrometer. We also now have digital hydrometers that give you a specific gravity reading by Bluetooth or perhaps Wi-Fi. And we also have refractometers. Let's take a look at traditional glass hydrometers. Now these can be specifically for wine, for beer, for spirits, or we can actually get ones that have a triple scale that will read all three. In actual use, what we find is the less information on the hydrometer, the easier it is to read a correct reading. So at the cheaper end of the market, they do tend to have a lot more information on them and the scale tends to be a lot wider. That means there's an awful lot of information and just a tiny amount of difference in height on the hydrometer makes a huge difference in the reading. We do have really narrow gauge hydrometers. Now we have these specifically made for us and we have a starting hydrometer and we have a finishing hydrometer. And as I say, the scale on those is a lot narrower, making accurate readings much, much easier. So these glass hydrometers are actually precision instruments and they're measuring the amount of sugar dissolved within a liquid. For each of the glass hydrometers, there will be a specific temperature that they're calibrated to. Now, the ones that we sell are actually all calibrated to 20 degrees, but somewhere on the hydrometer, now it could be on the paper that's housed within the hydrometer, or it could be a label on the packaging of the hydrometer, but somewhere there will be a temperature at which the hydrometer is calibrated to. So to use our hydrometer, we're gonna use it in conjunction with a trial jar. Now we're gonna fill our trial jar with our wort, and it's quite important that it needs to be clear wort. So if it contains a large amount of hop debris or trub, it kind of makes the wort a little bit thicker and it's gonna mess up with the reading of the hydrometer and you're not gonna get an accurate reading. So it really wants to be as clear a wort as possible. We also want to fill the trial jar as full as possible. Now that will aid us to take an accurate reading. It will also cut down the amount of bubbles within the trial jar, which actually affects the way that the hydrometer reads. 
We can also help to get rid of some of the bubbles by giving the hydrometer a gentle spin as we pop it into the trial jar. Now we've placed our hydrometer within the trial jar, let's have a look at how to take a reading. Now you'll notice where the hydrometer sits in the trial jar, the wort actually licks up the side of the hydrometer. We want to ignore this. So it's almost like we're measuring a flat surface across the trial jar. In the example here, you can see we could easily take this reading at 1046, where an actual accurate reading is 1047. So let us take a look at digital hydrometers. Now actually, they do the same job. They're measuring the amount of sugar dissolved within a liquid. These are designed to be put in the fermenter at the start of fermentation and left there for the duration. Now different versions have different ways to connect. Some work with Wi-Fi, some work with Bluetooth, and indeed can actually work with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. This gives you remote access to your fermenting work. You can track exactly what it's doing at any one point. Another advantage that they have is they're actually giving you the temperature of the work as well as the gravity reading. Now these aren't as accurate as a traditional glass hydrometer. Now they're a fantastic tool to use in the brewery. They'll tell you when fermentation started, when it's slowed down, when it's finished, and the temperature graph right throughout the whole of the fermentation. They actually work by floating within the wort. Now, if you think about how fermentation works, sometimes there's high Krausen, or sometimes we've dry hopped. Now that can slightly affect their accuracy. So we need to think of these products as a tool rather than a replacement for a traditional glass hydrometer. Let's take a look at refractometers. Now, they have huge advantages at certain stages during the brewing process. We really want to think of them as a tool to use whilst we're actually making our wort rather than towards the end of fermentation. Now, this is because if there is alcohol in the sample that we're testing, it skews the results. Now there are actually conversion charts that we can use, but it's never as accurate as using a glass hydrometer at the end of fermentation. So let's look at the advantages that using a refractometer has over using a hydrometer whilst we're actually making our work. Now because the sample size on a refractometer is tiny, we just need a pipette and just put a dot of the wort onto the refractometer to be able to take a reading. We don't need a 250 mil trial jar to take the reading. We also don't have to worry about the temperature anything like as much as we do with a glass hydrometer because it's so much quicker to cool down just a dot of wort. So it's very handy to take a gravity reading pre-boil. That way we know how efficient our mash has been and we can make adjustments if it's out of our scale. It's also handy to check after our boil to know that our numbers are in spec with our recipe. So they work by passing light through a sample that we're looking at through a sight glass. It's really easy. We just take a sample of work using the supplied pipette. We drop it on the optical lens, close the lid, hold it up to the light, and then we can focus on the scale and there'll be a line that runs across it so we can actually take the gravity reading. So hopefully we've explained exactly why it's so important to take gravity readings and the different tools that are involved and the best way to use them within the brewing process. And always remember, nothing will replace a simple glass hydrometer. As always, if you have further questions about taking the gravity readings of your work, please add them in the comments below, or you can telephone us or email in. Thanks for watching. Have a great brew.